In the last lecture, we have seen the stop and wait protocol and the stop and wait ARQ protocol. In today's lecture, we will see the sliding window protocol. Let's start the session with the outcomes. In today's session, we have three outcomes. Let's see what are they. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to Outcome number one, understand the drawbacks of stop and wait ARQ protocol. Outcome number two, we will know the need for sliding window protocol. And outcome number three, we will understand the working of sliding window protocol. Before we go into the sliding window protocol, let's see the stop and wait ARQ protocol again, but briefly. We know the flow control protocols are for noiseless channel and noisy channels. And we have already seen the stop and wait protocol and the stop and wait ARQ protocol. You may be wondering where is sliding window protocol in the hierarchy. Go back in ARQ and the selective repeat ARQ are the sliding window protocols. Let's see the stop and wait protocol now. The idea of stop and wait protocol is very simple. How stop and wait protocol work? After transmitting one frame, the sender waits for an acknowledgement before transmitting the next frame. Suppose if the acknowledgement does not arrive after a certain period of time, the sender times out and retransmits the original frame. But whatever it is, only one frame can be sent at a time. Let's see the working of stop and wait protocol briefly. Suppose we have a sender and we have a receiver. If sender is sending one frame or a data packet, the sender will not send the next data packet or the frame before receiving an acknowledgement. If the acknowledgement is received on time, it will send the next data packet. Suppose if the acknowledgement is not received on time, the timer of the sender times out and it retransmits the previous data packet or the frame and it expects an acknowledgement. If the acknowledgement is on time, no problem, it sends the next data packet. Otherwise, the same process is continued. Now when we see the scenario, we have a lot of drawbacks with the stop and wait ARQ protocol. Let's see what are the drawbacks in the stop and wait ARQ protocol. The main drawback of stop and wait protocol is sending one frame at a time. Because if we have a very high bandwidth and if that bandwidth can handle 1000 data packets also, but this protocol is sending only one data packet at a time. So we are not properly utilizing the entire bandwidth. So the second drawback is the poor utilization of bandwidth. And the third is the poor performance. If the bandwidth is not fully utilized, obviously it leads to poor performance of the protocol. And these are the drawbacks of stop and wait ARQ protocol. Let's see what is sliding window protocol. In stop and wait protocol, we can send one frame at a time. Whereas in a sliding window protocol, we can send multiple frames at a time. How many number of frames can be sent? The number of frames to be sent is based on a parameter called window size. So the sender and the receiver will have a window size and based on the window size only, the number of frames to be sent is desired. And each frame in this case is numbered, which we call as a sequence number. And this is what the brief introduction about a sliding window protocol. Let's see the working of sliding window protocol now. Suppose if we have a sender and we have a receiver. The sender has 11 frames to send and these are the frames. As I already mentioned, each frame is numbered. For easy understanding, the frames are numbered as 0, 1, 2, 3 up to 10. So total 11 frames are there in the sender side. Then how many frames can be sent at a time? That is decided by a parameter called window size. For example, we will take the window size to be 4. It means four frames can be sent at a time. Let's say this is the first frame, that is frame zero is the first frame. Let's assume the sender is sending the first frame, that is frame zero. Once frame zero is sent, just notice there is a sliding window which is coming into action and it says frame zero is sent. But how many frames can be sent before expecting an acknowledgement? In this case, four frames can be sent before expecting an acknowledgement because this window size is the parameter that decides how many frames that can be transmitted before expecting an acknowledgement. Now in this case, frame one can be sent. Just see the sliding window, frame two can be sent and frame three also can be sent. So a total of four frames can be sent at a time. Now after the receipt of frame 3, now frame 0 will be acknowledged by the receiver. Let's say 
the receiver is acknowledging for frame 0. So this is an acknowledgement. If you observe here, frame 0 is received by the receiver and the receiver has acknowledged that frame 0 is received. Once frame 0's acknowledgement is received by the sender, the sender now can send the next frame that is this frame, frame number 4. Now frame 4 is sent but keenly watch the sliding window. This sliding window starts sliding a little bit. It means frame 0 is acknowledged and frame 4 is sent. Now let's assume the receiver has acknowledged frame 1. In sender got the acknowledgement for frame 1. Now what the sender does? It can send the next frame. The next frame in the buffer is frame 5 and the sender will now send frame 5. Once frame 5 is sent, what happens to the sliding window? It moves a little bit and it says that frame number 2 to 5 are not acknowledged. But frame number 0 and 1 are acknowledged. So this is what the scenario is. Frame number 0 and 1 are acknowledged. And frame number 2, 3, 4 and 5 are sent but not acknowledged. Now let's assume frame number 2 is also acknowledged. Now what happens? The sender will send the next frame in the buffer. The next frame in the buffer is frame number 6. Now frame number 6 is sent to the receiver. Now what happens to the sliding window? It slides a little bit so as to make a marking of the unacknowledged frames and the acknowledged frames. Let me move this window size here. Yes. Now we will analyze what are the things that are there in this part. There are three parts. These are the frames that are already sent and acknowledged. If you observe here, frame 0, 1, 2 are acknowledged and that is what it is here. And what about this that is in the current window? This is the current window which contains the frame numbers 3, 4, 5 and 6. It means these are the frames 3, 4, 5 and 6 are sent already but not yet acknowledged. So the middle portion is these frames are sent already but not acknowledged. And what about frame 7, 8, 9, 10? If you observe here, sender has not sent any frames with the numbers 7, 8 and 9, 10. So the last portion here is these are the frames that are not yet sent. I hope now you guys understood the working of a sliding window protocol. And what we have seen in today's lecture? We understood the drawbacks of stop and wait ARQ protocol. We know the need for sliding window protocol. And we understood the working of a sliding window protocol. I hope you guys have enjoyed the session and the animation and thank you for watching.